Hey everybody, let's talk about using the pen tool and the stroke settings to create a more complex drawing with a variety of stroke styles, uh, line profiles, and so on. All right, so what I have is a little map, a treasure map template where we can practice these different styles. And we can go back and forth even between using the pen tool and the pencil as we draw this, uh, this picture. All right. Now, it would take me a few hours to go through and redraw and recreate this, and that's not my intention. My intention is to instead is to just demonstrate a few of the different line quality options you have available to see how you wanna create your picture. All right, so first things first, let's try drawing the dashed line for the treasure map on this picture. I wanna set up my, uh, my line and my uh, pen tool so it's gonna draw properly. And something I tend to do is when I trace a drawing, a lot of times I work in a red color just because it's obvious, I know where I've been, I know where I am, and I know what's left to be finished. So I'm gonna set up my, my stroke, I'm gonna turn off the fill color, and I'm gonna set up the stroke color, I'm gonna give it like a reddish color, and I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker so as I go along I can manipulate it. Um, so what I'm going to do is start over here on the end point and try to draw this wavy line. So I'm going to click and drag. Now my next question is where is the best position to put an anchor point when drawing a curve? Generally it's at the apex, the top or the furthest point or the roundest point of the curve. So that means somewhere around here would be a really good spot to put the top of that curve line. Now, the other question is, okay, where do I put the next one? If I can get away with it, I'm gonna to try to put it down here at the bottom because that way I can use fewer anchor points and make the line smoother. Now you'll notice there's a little problem here. I'm gonna ignore that for now, not to worry. We'll fix that in a minute. I'm gonna go over to this side, click at the top of that and drag over. And then pretty much here at the end, I'm gonna click and drag the opposite direction to try to finish that puppy off. Now, I'm gonna go in and adjust this line to make it match. So I'm gonna press escape on my keyboard and that's gonna let go of the line and allow me to go back now and fix uh, the incorrect line. So I need to change to my direct selection arrow. I'm gonna go ahead and press A on my keyboard and I'm gonna click this top anchor point here. And I'm gonna stretch that handlebar so it rounds that curve a little more. Now notice it wasn't quite right here. So I'm gonna try stretching that direction with that one. And sometimes it's a little bit of a tug of war, kind of going back and forth and back and forth as you try to adjust, and position the lines in the right spaces, the right places. Notice how when I'm doing this, it's messing up this line. That's gonna happen. So basically, I'm gonna try to get the left side where I want it and then I'll fix the right side. Now, to be honest with you, I think to make that work, I'm gonna have to go ahead and add an additional anchor point. Not a problem. This curve just seems to be a little too extreme for me to get all the way around. So how do I add an anchor point? I change back to the pen tool I swoop in on this line and about halfway between this anchor point and this anchor point, I'm gonna just click the line and notice how when I get in there and I hover the pen tool over that line, I get a little plus symbol. That's good. That means it's gonna add an anchor point there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and add that anchor point there, switch back to my direct selection arrow, click that anchor point and drag it over until I get it in the right position. Okay, so that gives me a little better control and I can go in with my direct selection arrow and fix that line so it's a little rounder and follows the path a little bit better. So there is a give and take and a 
push and pull and a tug of war that you have to go through here to get your lines just right. And again, that's one of my favorite things about Illustrator is the freedom to go in after the fact and fix your lines. Okay, so now I can come back down here, try to taper this line a little better. Yeah, there we go. Um, looks like I'm probably gonna wind up with the same problem on this side. I was a little too aggressive and kept out. Didn't quite have enough anchor points. So I think what I'll do is switch back to my pen tool, click here in the middle, switch back to my direct selection tool, click that anchor point, and try to round that curve a little better. Now, honestly, I'm realizing now I'm probably using a bad color. I'm gonna try to use green because that red is the same color, that red I was using happened to be the same color as the, the stroke line, so I'll fix that. Okay, so good enough. Now we're in the ballpark. All right, what's missing are a few adjustments to the stroke. So if I wanna make those kinds of adjustments, like I wanna make this into a dashed line, I need to open the full-blown stroke palette. So I'm gonna click on the stroke button here, and I'm gonna click on dashed line on these options and I need to decide how long the dash needs to be. And by default, it looks like it put in 12. It's not quite long enough. So I'm gonna increase that to like 18 and see how that looks. How about 20? Okay, but you still see there's too big of a gap so how about we change that gap to like five and see what happens. That's a little closer. So here I'm just guessing to try to, you know, match that, that drawing that's on the picture. So maybe, maybe try six, maybe try 18, you know, mess around until I get it to look like it's in the ballpark. Another thing I can do is add a rounding edge to those ends depending on the style of line I want, there is that rounding end and you see that kind of closed the loop there a little bit. So maybe I'll have to make that gap like a 10. Now, if I'm annoyed that that thing keeps disappearing, I can always go to the window menu and open the full blown stroke palette so I can see it and it'll remain open while I'm working. So maybe make that gap a little bit wider, 12. That's Getting a little closer. It's not quite perfect, it's okay. I imagine this drawing was done by hand and so it would be difficult to match it exactly because of the imperfection, but I'm gonna let that one go for now. Let's focus on another area to test out some other styles. I'm gonna move down like to this little shark fin. This little line has some interesting character to it. I like the way it goes thick and thin and certain pieces have a little more of a character to them. Let's try drawing the shark fin itself. So again, I'm gonna start in one corner, drag a little handlebar to get the curve started, go up to the top of the dorsal fin. And notice how it just picked up the original setting that I created for that dashed line. Not to worry, I can click on the stroke setting, turn off the dashed line, change that down to a smaller line, turn off the, the rounded edge. Sometimes you have to do that after you've spent some time manipulating a line, you have to change it once you start drawing the other piece. Okay, notice I need to make this a sharp turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click that corner. That deletes the handlebar, lets me do a sharp turn or a shark turn, corny. All right, I'm gonna go in here and make this little notch. I'm gonna zoom in. Kind of go back and forth a little bit. And down to the end. Press escape to let go. Now that line is still a little bit thick, so I'm gonna go down to one point and you can see what we have here. Now, there are some preset line profiles that you can practice and play with. And these are found under the stroke palette. If I click on the stroke palette, 
I can look here and there are a variety of these little line styles, these little line profiles. And so what you got here is you got thick and thin, uh, you got variable. So either one of those actually do a pretty good job of creating that variable line quality that you would find in a regular ink drawing. So yeah, that's a little too much. That's good. I'm going to draw this little wave. Another one there with a little thick and thin profile. Give it that little, that little wave style. Now it is possible to do fractions of points. Notice how these points are just a little bit smaller and it's like somewhere in between one and two, if I just click the up and down arrows. There are some preset sizes here, but it is possible if you need to, to just go in there and type 1.5 or something like that to make it slightly thicker. So don't forget you can go in and manually put in a number if, if it's not quite matching your drawing. So now I can go here and start drawing this more extreme piece. I find the thing people have the most trouble with is changing corners, changing directions. And so don't forget, you can always just go back with the pen tool and reselect that anchor point you dropped off and it removes the handlebar and allows you to make a sharp turn. So here we go, just trying to make that little back and forth curve. I'm gonna go kind of fast to just get it done. Now in my illustration here, this thing has some broken pieces there on the edges uh, of that little wave. I'm gonna ignore that for now because I don't wanna make a, a broken segment line. Okay, finally back to the end. There we go, that's where I started. And again, if I need to, I can use maybe this variable one might be a good one for that. Or thick and thin, or the standard basic. Now in another video, you can watch how to use the width tool. And if you need to taper that line individually, you can use the width tool to come in and stretch and thicken only specific areas of your line. That's what that does really good for you because not always, there won't always be a profile that matches what you're trying to do. Okie dokie. And then here, just a couple circles, I'll draw a little circle. And I can also use one of those profiles on them, thick and thin or variable depending on the shape I wanna create. So that does a pretty good job of creating those lines and giving me that variability that I want. Now look along the edge of the island here. There are these little line segments. Okay, now those can be um, drawn a little faster and easier with the pencil because they, they're kind of imprecise. So I'm gonna to switch to the pencil tool, which is here. Um, sometimes it's hidden by the shaper tool on your toolbar. So I'll click that pencil and then I'll just try drawing a little line. Now, depending on my line settings, uh, you can set up the pencil to, to let go of, replace or extend your line. Right now, mine is set to let go. So I can just draw and move on to the next position. All right, so I just kind of freehand draw those pieces. You will notice that, hey, they're, they're square. They're kind of boring. They don't have the, the thin tapered edge. Well, it is possible to go here and select all those lines and adjust the stroke after the fact. 
maybe switch to a blunted line uh, or switch to the tapered line or a triangle. You know, I could try out a couple of those to see which one fits the best with my, uh, with my line drawing. But notice there is an annoying thing about the pencil tool and it took me a long time to actually solve it. Notice how whenever I draw with the pencil, it also just resets. It goes back to that normal boring line. Okay, well, there are a couple ways to get around that. Uh, one of them is to use an appearance. The other is to use a graphic style. Today, I'm gonna show you the graphic style way to do it. So let's say I like this line quality right here. This one is something I wanna keep using on other objects. It's already set up as a profile, so I can use it whenever I use my pencil. But what if I want to apply it in bulk and make sure that my pencil lines use it? Well, I'm gonna open the window menu and I'm gonna to go to graphic styles. Graphic styles can store any attribute that's applied to uh, an object, whether it's a stroke line, a color setting, whatever. So I'm gonna hit new graphic style, and I'm gonna save that line quality. So now, whenever I select any of those lines that I've drawn, I can click that line quality and it will drop it in. It'll reuse it on that. So that's one way to store that style, keep it, bring it back, use it again. Here's the second way you can deal with this. Under the window menu, we're gonna look at appearance. Under appearance, um, there's a little setting that will, you know, ruin your day or make you, you know, make you pull your hair out. Um, most people don't know about it, but under the little drop menu here, there is a new art has basic appearance setting. That is what's telling the pencil to return to the default. It's telling it to use the basic line setting profile. Why this is hidden away somewhere under this menu, I don't know because we want the pencil to remember what we just drew. Most other Illustrator tools do that. They remember what you just drew and they repeat it. This little setting here changes that. So I'm gonna uncheck it so that it's not selected. I'm going to change the style of these lines and use that graphic style button. Change my graphic styles and make sure that they're there, just like that. And then I'm gonna draw the next line. And from that point on, because I unchecked that stupid new line has basic appearance setting, it will now remember the line setting I've been using to draw. All right, so I suggest if you've got this file, you play around with it some more, you practice your line work, practice using the pen tool, practice using your strokes. It can be kind of fun to trace and uh, figure out your line quality, and this is a good thing to practice. All right, so hope that helps, gives you some, gives you some tips to make your line quality a little bit better, more interesting, and to deal with the, uh, the weird little things that happen in Illustrator. All right, you guys, see you next time.